But y'all already know what they did. What really happens if he, yo, he died of cancer, man? Chad Jackson, that's what happened to him. That's what really happened to him, brother. He got shot two weeks after I left the club. He got shot. And um, after he got shot, they found that cancer, man. Sometimes you could be injured and shit like that, and that shit comes out at you after that. King's Addies. From the King Addies family. What's good with y'all? And oh, I was telling y'all this. So Ms. Ms. Wolf, she's gonna come in here on Thursday. And she wanted to go out of puff a long time ago, but the nigga that was in jail, uh Buck told her not to. Buck and L was in jail, and L was pardoned first. They had nine 16 to life sentences. Those are the guys who was with butt naked that started the bad boy shit, you know, with the back and bad boy would give the money, you know, the puff and everything like that. So you put all the bad boy shit together. And when they went to jail and everything like that, Wolf was the one that was financing them, being in jail and the whole lot, doing all the lawyer shit, doing all the stuff that they need to be doing. It was always coming out of his pocket. And then when they got on trial, some other shit happened. And um, Rashad, thank you uh, for that five. I mean, for that cash out. Appreciate you. So, um, so when they got on trial, Wolf did some things, you know, saying to make sure that he could secure. Uh, But innocent plea. Let's put it that way. He did some things to secure innocent plea. I hear you, Willie Lane, but I'm not giving him no, you know, no burn, bro. Emo, what's up with you? A walk three nine, felonless. Yo, can I get some more questions, man? Cause I like being on here to a sense, man. I know Don G, what's up with you? Thanks for the uh, super chat. But this is therapy for me, man. I'm telling you the God honest truth, man. It is therapy. Fucking dolo. I like when uh family and friends and people come over and everything like that, but it is what it is. I'm about to go to the loo. I'm just waiting on some stuff to get taken care of here. And I'm gonna be in the loo. I'm gonna be home for a long time. I ain't been home for a long time, so I need to go spend some. Ain't that right, Miss J, Miss just J1900 with that apron you sent me. That was so nice of you. I really appreciate that. That's going to hang right behind me. I got to figure out, I'm going to figure out right behind it so that people could see it. I'm going to move it over. And that's in memory of what you did for me, man. I really appreciate that. J Honda Analyst, Darth Ma, who's Puffy Boss? I no boss, he's a millionaire, billionaire. I no boss. That's what you mean. Yo, Pam, I was trying to get the book out, but I already found somebody in St. Louis. Uh, I'm going to go down there, and she said that she's going to dedicate her time to writing my book and getting with me with it. So I'm going to call her tonight. You know, Paris, Miss P., you know what I'm saying? She said that she was going to do that for me. My little niece, she wrote two books. I'm a spearhead and govern it. 
it's gonna be a lot of shit y'all ain't know. I'm gonna be able to talk about them via say, yo, I got some stories that y'all hear. Y'all gonna be like, wow, when that nigga was holding that back. Yep, put that in the book. Uh, why did Puff run from Sugar? Uh, I don't know why he ran. Because he, I know why he ran. Because I wasn't taking no ass whoopings. I wasn't. And he know me. I wasn't taking no ass whoopings. Yo, back then I was young, dumb, and full of cum. And excuse me for my language, ladies. It's, it's true. Like, I thought I was that nigga. You understand? I was big. I was nice with mine. You know, I you know, I put in work in the clubs. I put in work in people. They know that. You know, I was nice with mine. I was trained by some of the best guys coming out of St. Louis, Benny Smith. My man Cedric, Cedric, Cedric Malone, Black Belt Karate. Uh, you know, I, I learned it all, dog. You understand? I did that kickboxing before the MMA shit like that. I was, you know, I would box you, kick you. I'd do anything, man. I'd bite your ear off. I don't care how big, how small you are. I don't, I don't, I never play. We, I don't play that, man. We ain't play that that growing up. We ain't, we ain't judge a nigga by his size. Now you won't fight me. I don't care how you, nigga, if you a midget. And that's real talk. Cause that, and that ain't because. That's because I respect all men. Two lions bump heads, what's going to happen? They don't say because you little or small and stuff like that. It's a fight. So I wasn't fighting no 20, what they had, like 10, 15 guys. I tell you, I got these niggas. What I go, how, he, well, he got a one like you. How, Gene, how you got him? <laughs> yeah, I got him. <laughs> and I had my name on my friends with them loud mouths. And I was dumb. Thanks, Emo. Is that Wayne from the uh, post office? Wayne Powell, what's good with you? Yeah, Tower Beach. WWW Tower Beach. Puff getting caught with uh, yeah, he did. Allegedly. And some chick got a Benz out of that. Allegedly. <laughs> that was some old uh Bentley back in the day Bentley shit. I did a lot of stuff. I remember I did this. I worked for this uh, this this madam, and I used to have to take girls places. Ooh. One of these girls said Mike Tyson was a beast. <laughs> I should tell y'all that story, but I don't want to run the ladies off my channel. <laughs> Danny Trotman. I can't answer that, bro. I don't remember the pick, uh, Unique. Have I spoken to Ms. Wallace? No, I haven't spoken to Ms. Wallace. Ms. Wallace got, you know, to me, Mark Pitts and Wayne, them, they puff friends. But they handle her management and her affairs. But she knew how to get in touch with me through Perry Sanders. Perry Sanders always knew how to get in touch with me. That's her lawyer. That was a lawyer. I knew Tut and Jack.
don't know if Big still. I don't know if Puff still own Big's publishing, but you can always go and find that out. Eli Point, good. So I appreciate that. Tub HDL, North St. Louis. Vanderbilt Avenue. I grew up on North Mark, 3907 North Market in Vanderbilt. That's where Jason Meat Company used to be at. I think they tore that building down on North Market in Vanderbilt. I used to go to Wim School right there on St. Ferdinand. First, I went to Bates, which was up the street on North Market Avenue. I think it was around Springer College around that time. I think that was Bates, uh, Bates Elementary. Then um, the dudes used to chase me <laughs> from... Because I went to Bates first, then when I got transferred over on the other side of North Mark, I went to Wims. So the niggas from Wims used to chase me all the way home every day. And then when they caught me, they said, yo, damn, man, yo, we just wanted to find out, did you want to play with us? <laughs> oh, that was Wesley Steele, Joe Hill, Don Rico Green, Way Wims. And Ray Merriweather. Fred Williams and Ray Merriweather. <laughs> My childhood friends, man. That was crazy. They chased me every day, man. I was like, yo, I can't fight all of them. I was Shh. My uncle knew he used to send me to that store all the time. I said, no, nah, I'll go the one way down this way. Nah, uh, we want you to go to because they got this. Man, them niggas from St. Ferdinand. Used to chase me. I was like, Phew. they be waiting outside the store. I just bolt out the door. Phew. Then one time they just they set it up like they had something all the way up the block where they knew I was gonna run at. I was like, yo, man, this shit was crazy. That's when you was a kid. That's when we was kids then. Yo, listen here, man. I know I, I've been burning y'all ears and everything like that. I'm not going to wear out my welcome. Uh, if I can get a couple more questions or something that somebody want to know. Uh, oh, G, G. Red said, finish the Tyson story. <laughs> oh, my God, G. Red. No. Uh, I don't know, G. Red, no disrespect or nothing like that. Let me a couple of ladies who say they want to hear it and everything. And I... Uh, I'll tell it, you know what I'm saying? But it's nothing provocative like that, but it's provocative. Thank you, LaShonda Howard, Jermaine Ferguson. I only had that one story, that two stories about Nas when his man shot Eddie F's brother up in the club and then <laughs> lost his beeper. You know, I told that story before, bro. Oh, Jermaine Ferguson, you got deleted by my man Kaz. Kaz ain't playing. He ain't playing. Deacon daughter, you smiling. You want to hear the nasty story too? Uh. Yeah, I was going to cook tonight, Ice, but I had so much food, man. Yo, I had, I made, um, uh, chicken and gravy. I made smothered chicken. I made oh these lamb chops. Oh my god! When you get lamb chops, no homo. We don't talk like that in men. And them shits melt in your fucking mouth. Oh my god! Lamb chop. I made uh, greens, fried cabbage, Spanish rice. Uh. 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 Potato salad. Doing my thing. CJ, what's going on out there in Flushing? Flatbush. Yo, Brooklyn love big, man. Yo, and your man is a turncoat on big. He ain't never even like pup, but you see what money it do? You see what money it do to niggas? Turn you all the way around. Might turn your sexuality. 
might have niggas doing things they ain't normally thought or thought they would do. Because you see how shit is coming out. Yo, I don't mean to speak on shit because I ain't here for that. But you see how Wendy Williams' uh, husband shit is coming out now. And he was around a lot of gangsters. All them niggas was gangsters. Andre, Andrea McCain, no, I don't have any Spike Lee stories. No, uh. No, I don't, no, I don't know anything about, I don't have any Spike Lee stories. Not at all. Sorry about that. But thanks for the super chat. People always ask me to do a, a Tubbs STL. Nah, bro. I didn't know uh, uh, Tupac bodyguard. He was a bodybuilder. He wasn't looking like everybody think because you a bouncer, uh, you do security, you a bodyguard and everything like that. If you ain't trained on this shit, you know, and it's some training. That's why a lot of people get in trouble and they, and, 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 and they don't know how to conduct they self, you know, it's a profession. You got to know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Yo, I swear for living God, this is how I started running this shit in Cancun. They used to have a club called Daddios. And I mean, like, people be, it be a line, just say, I can say a football field long and just say you got three or four people and they're football long down the street, down the road, trying to get in this club in Cancun, Mexico. But everybody is fighting and they, they, they watch a car and you can't do, you, you can't get them in. So then they were doing a party and I wasn't running the door. They wanted me up by the cashiers and everything like that. Just before, you know, Chris, Chris and uh, Puffman was running. The, they were doing the parties, but it's owned by the syndicate, the Mexican mafia. Yo, they was having problem at the door, and them Mexicans don't play. I seen them lay two guys out there. One dude hit the one of the Mexican cops with a bottle. Nigga turned around with the gun and just <clears throat> dead, done. And that's true story. So we out there in Mexico. Damn, I'm going on two hours running my damn mouth, man. I'm gonna stop this shit. Yo, we out there in Mexico, man. Let me let me tell this right there. And the line is crazy. I I went to the I said, yo, man, listen here, man. This thing's gonna be all night, man. This club ain't club ain't even to its capacity. So what's going on? I said, man, I'll clear this shit up in less than an hour. Just give me. An extra, well, an extra two hundred dollars, and told me just give me an extra two hundred dollars. I clear this shit up in an hour. Now I did the same thing in D.C. with Phil Robinson when Puff was giving a party out there in D.C. Magic Johnson and all of them like that, right there. And I'm just gonna jump to the D.C. What I did it. So they was giving this party at the All Star Weekend, and I'm like this. I said I clear this shit up less than forty five minutes. All these niggas out there, our people just want to get in the party. That bronze and that, get the fuck back or nobody getting the fuck in. Nigga, so he ain't getting his money. That shit don't work. I say, yo, listen to me. This is what I want everybody to do. I got to clear this door up right here. You understand? They don't want to let nobody in because y'all acting a damn fool. And if I wanted to get in this party with y'all, I'd be acting a damn fool too. So I understand what y'all doing right now. But I want y'all to listen to me. If you listen to me, I bet you in a half an hour, all y'all be in the party. And all y'all don't be in the party within a half an hour, then I'll pay for you to get in the party. I just need you to listen to me and do what I tell you to do, and we good. Everybody with me? Nigga like, yeah, big man, do your thing, do your thing. 
I said, don't nobody move unless I touch you. So the, the line is up here. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go ahead. So those people go. And this one person will move that I didn't touch. I said, y'all see this person right here? They moved. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Didn't touch him. Y'all go ahead. They went in. I said, man, could you just do what I say? And everybody going to get in. He said, I got you, big man. I hit them. One. Then now everybody right there, no, they not moving. So now all this space right here is cleared up. I use this. Because I know all you want to do is get in and have a good time. And you're willing to listen to anybody who's going to give you that and help you get in there. Listen, this has been Big Gene Rodell, the last big night. Uh, Fred Tom just hit me with a, another super chat. I appreciate that. Uh, next week, I'll probably throw that story on Mike Tyson because I'm going to be talking about Dapper Dan and they had a big fight out in front of Dapper Dan with Midstream. I know y'all know about that already and everything, but I'm going to throw in the, the, uh, the, the other party. I appreciate y'all coming here with me. I gave, I'm gave i here for an hour, 45 minutes. I'm sorry, man. Listen, I'll be just going off the top of the, you know, the head right there and just telling stories and, and talking. Um, E-L-G-N, uh, E-N-T, Stephanie Crew. What's good with you, Thomas Woodson? What's happening? Jermaine Ferguson. Oh, you got deleted. <laughs> Ed Potts. Yo, yo, he disciplined Puff a couple of times, but I was the only one could stop him. I could grab whoop, you know what I'm saying? It was two reasons I can grab him. Because I wasn't scared of him, too. <laughs> Nigga, listen here. I was his brother P.O. and I was his P.O. Then he got off parole. But I still could grab him because he respected me. And I respected him. Yeah, I know Mama Wolf is close to her grandkids. Uh, Dave Gregory, a taste of choice. I don't know if I know him by that name or whatever. Yeah, I met Pac a couple of times, Carter Carter. But anyway, this has been another big gene at Cooking in Conversation. Miss J.L. Pac gave me that Cooking in Conversation. Yes. I uh, appreciate all that. I appreciate the letters. I read the letters. Uh, appreciate y'all giving me y'all time. Thank you. And I'll see y'all Thursday with Miss Jones. I need y'all to send in those uh, um, questions for me. And remember, if they don't like you, fuck them and feed them beans and nip them in the bud. Peace. <laughs>